Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And when we go into that word iniquity in the Strong's, it's G458, anomia, which in the outline of biblical usage reads the condition of without law, because ignorant of it, because of violating it, contempt and violation of law, iniquity, wickedness. And on the one hand, this can go into, you know, societal collapse as uh, the economies of the world continue to deteriorate and prices increase and people lose their jobs and more police leave the police force so there's less of them patrolling the streets. You're going to have a state of lawlessness out here where people are going to do whatever they want because they know that there's going to be no repercussions for it. Playing into what? The love of many waxing cold. Even more of a dog-eat-dog society out here. People stealing for food, killing for food, doing whatever they can to survive, you know, the times we're in that are only going to get worse. And it can also go into a, a state of lawlessness of this planet not being governed under the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai in the scriptures, which is the only right way to govern anything. But with the Edomite, the so-called white man in rulership, who does everything clean contrary to the laws, statutes, and commandments in the scriptures. Hey, this planet is in a chaotic state right now. Men and women hate each other and can barely form relationships. You've got alphabet people running around, a polluted environment, you know, cell and Wi-Fi radiation giving people cancer, a bunch of different ideologies out here bugging people out. The list goes on and on. And what I'll be going into in this uh, video an epidemic of loneliness out here with people not being able to form close connections with each other, you know, whether on a romantic level or even just on a level of being friends. And that's uh, happening primarily in the, you know, the so-called Western world. This is an article from businessinsider.com titled Gen Z loneliness is so bad that some Young adults are spending thousands trying to make friends through gym memberships and social clubs. And the first image they've got is what? Three average, you know, Western looking women and, and pay attention to the different pictures that they're going to have in this article. It's mainly uh, women. But again, this is what you get in a in a society a lawless society, not based on the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Everything is out of order because if this world was governed under the laws, statutes, and commandments, what would you have? These women getting married off at a young age, you know, after they've reached the flower of their youth, you know, get their period, having a husband, becoming mothers, taking care of the household, and not being lonely, you know, whores out here. And then on the flip side, what with men, men uh, at the age of 12, which, you know, in the ancient world and according to our customs, a man, a boy becomes a man at 12, starting to learn the ways of becoming a man, you know, getting under a friend of his father or an uncle and starting to build up his assets. And then what? He has a wife. He gains a wife. He starts a family. And, you know, the cycle repeats and a community is built and everything's running in a perfect order. But in this society of Esau Edoms, we've got this Western mentality, this so-called uh, individualist mentality, this get it how you live mentality, this you only live once mentality, which is bred this narcissistic, selfish uh, society we live in. 
to where everybody's just concerned about their own selves. And this is what you get. Loneliness, people no longer being able to connect with each other and having to go out and pay hundreds to thousands of dollars to join different clubs and communities to try to find friends. And even that still doesn't work. You cannot build a society off of a bunch of narcissistic, you know, selfish people out here because at the drop of a hat, when things get bad, there's going to be no community. There's going to be no neighborhood or anything like that. So what? People are going to turn on each other and attack each other and take from each other anything they can once they're starving out here, don't have jobs and what? The electricity's gone out again. Because iniquity or lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And you women out here are especially going to get it the worst. Because the only reason you're allowed to, you know, be single, independent whores out here is because this Western infrastructure is set up to cater to women. But once it collapses and you really got to be strong and independent out there, hey, you're going to see that you truly are the weaker vessel out here, and you're going to need a man's protection. But you women have screwed over so many men out here that, hey, you ain't going to find that protection, <laughs> that covering. And uh, as the elder Malcolma of the Chicago camp always says, you're going to go from riding the cock carousel <laughs> to the cock carousel riding you. But without any further ado, let's get into this article. Americans aged 18 to 25 reported feeling lonelier than any other demographic in a recent study. And it's not just the Gen Zs that are through. Millennials are through, which I'm a part of that generation. And just seeing my fellow millennials, hey, they're lonely, depressed, you know, single, abusing drugs and alcohol. Gen X is through. Baby boomers are through. You know, just look, a bunch of men in their late 40s and up are committing suicide because they're considered no longer economically viable. Their wives have uh, divorced them. Hey, the list goes on and on. If you're living in the Western world, really living under the vibration of Esau, Edom in this lawless society, you're through and in a chaotic state. In search of connection, young people are spending on gym memberships, social clubs, and art classes Insider spoke to 23 Gen Zers. Most said they spend more on social activities than before the C019 pestilence. Lynette Ban moved from New York to Austin during the pestilence to save money. But now three years into working remotely, she's racked up a new expense, friendships. Ban estimates that she spends at least $500 a month on various memberships and events aimed at making friends and maintaining connections. Hey, people out here have a hard time enough keeping a functioning, you know, romantic relationship going. Now it's getting so bad that people can't even uh, form uh, lasting friendships or even create any. That includes a $2,500 annual membership to the social club Soho House and a 500 annual fee for the gym program Class Pass that's on top of hundreds of months of lunches and dinners out. Complete madness. Hey, growing up, you know, making friends was never this hard. I never was spending $500 or $2,500, you know, a year to make friends. I started prioritizing post pestilence, more of these clubs, and joining these organizations where I can meet new people and build a network that way, Ban said. Ban, 26, is like many young Americans who have spent an important chunk of their adult lives outside the classrooms, offices, and other shared spaces where offline relationships are so often formed. This has led in part to what the U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy has called an epidemic of loneliness. Shit, an epidemic of throughness. The problem is particularly acute among young people. Over a third of Americans aged 18 to 25 reported feeling lonely frequently almost all the time. 
or all the time in the 30 days preceding a December 2022 survey conducted by the Harvard Graduate School of Education that was shared with Insider, Richard Weisbord, a child and family psychologist who worked on the study, told Insider that people between the ages of 18 and 25 reported loneliness more than any other demographic. This is the time where young people are making some of the hardest and most difficult decisions of their lives, and they really need support. Wiseboard said, Loneliness isn't only a mental health concern. Social isolation can be as dangerous as smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day and contributes to health issues including cardiovascular disease, stroke, and dementia, Murthy wrote in a recent report. Insider interviewed 23 young adults between the age of 21 and 27 about their experiences with loneliness. All but three said they're spending more money now than they were before the pestilence on social activities such as art classes and gym memberships to make friends. In turn, many said that they are spending less on personal expenses like solo trips or TV subscriptions. Here's another image. As you can see, single Western women again. And let's read the little uh, caption. Lynette Ban Wright and her friend Rachel went to a pasta making class during a trip to Italy. But here, here we have uh, women learning how to cook as a hobby instead of as a skill to be a wife. And if they were to get in a relationship, do you think they'd really uh, be happy with cooking from scratch pasta for their husband? You know, of course not. That's the, the mindset of these women out here. But again, that's what you get with a, a society of lawlessness without the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and people filling their natural, you know, God given roles. Money can't buy Gen Zers happiness, but they do hope it can buy them friends. That's one of the most saddest, pathetic, you know, statements I, I think I've ever read. Money can't buy you happiness, but you're so pathetic and narcissistic and out of touch. You got to use money <laughs> to buy friends. Let's get back into these precepts. This is Isaiah chapter 24. I'm going to start at verse four and jump around a bit. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. And that word languisheth in the Strong's is H535, a mal, to be weak, to droop, to languish, to be exhausted, to be or grow feeble. And under this lawless society that Esau has created, what the earth has languished under his rulership, the environments, you know, destroyed. Animals are dying off in mass numbers. Lands are getting strip mined for their resources. We could uh, spend hours, days going on into the complete madness which you Edomites, you so-called white people, gonna govern the earth under. But the world languisheth and fadeth away, and the haughty or the proud people of the earth do languish. So what? You've got these proud people out here languishing, you know, growing weak or feeble as well. As we're reading in that article, there's an epidemic of loneliness to where people are just so out of touch that they got to sp spend hundreds to thousands of dollars <laughs> just to make a friend. And then what else? You know, people have degraded mentally and physically from what? These GMO, you know, foods out here, these uh, prescription medications, the cell phone and Y radiation, Wi-Fi radiation, these chemtrails getting sprayed into the sky, all these environmental factors just breaking people down and further making them weak or languishing. We truly are in the worst case scenario out here. But now I'm going to jump down to verse seven. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth. All the merry hearted do sigh. And you especially see that after this whole situation that took place after uh, 
from 2019 to what 2022, people can feel in their spirit that things are different prior to the C019 and that they ain't going to go back to normal. What the economy is getting worse and worse. We're $33 trillion in debt. This economy is going to collapse. Inflation is turning to hyperinflation. People are losing their jobs. And what, there's an epidemic of loneliness out here to where people got to go out and, and, you know, try to make friends and fail at that. The mirth of the tabret ceaseth. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Let's go back to a particular part in that article. What would it say? Ban estimates she spends at least $500 a month on various memberships and events aimed at making friends and maintaining connections. A pick up on that word maintaining for all these events she spends monies on and goes out to uh, meet new people with. How many of those so-called friends does she retain? And let's not get into all these men that these uh, women out here are sleeping with that are often one night stands. And then if they get a so-called, you know, relationship material man, they get bored with him and uh, push him to the side and then hop right back on the cop cock carousel that includes a $2,500 annual membership to the social club Soho House and a 500 annual fee for the gym program class pass that's on top of hundreds a month on lunches and dinners out. And what? When these people go out to these different events, you know, dinners and lunches and what they're drinking. But they're not drinking to have a uh, fun or a good time anymore. More often than not, it's to what drink to forget about their sorrows. The fact that their uh, eyeballs deep in debt, that they're one paycheck away from getting kicked out of their house or that they can't even find new friends or even find a, a romantic partner. So they go to these different bars and, and restaurants trying to meet new people, drinking themselves into a stupor just to go home alone or go home with somebody for the night and then end up alone and blocked the next day. And it's only going to get worse as the societal uh, as society continues to collapse. This. But uh, let me see. I reread verse nine. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. And the United States of America is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures. And Babylon in the Hebrew is Babel, which means confusion, confusion by mixing, mixing all these different ideas and philosophies, non-biblical together to try to get some uh, results. But the results you get is even more confusion, more madness, which is leading to the city of confusion being broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. The economic situation deteriorating out here. More businesses shutting down, more people losing their jobs. There is a crying for wine in the streets. And in the scriptures, wine can uh, represent philosophies or ideas out here. So a crying for understanding out here. A crying for answers. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And this is ultimately talking about during Jacob's trouble when all hell is breaking loose and people are going to be running to the left, to the right, up and down to find answers. But they're not going to be able to find answers. And we can, you know, see an example for a crying of wine or understanding in the streets right now. People trying to understand themselves. People not under people not uh, coming to answers as to why am I single? Why am I lonely? Why can't I make friends? Why is uh, just I'm just losing in society? Hey, that's because you followed after this B system. You've drunk of the wine of the whore. <laughs> this American Western mindset, which pushes what? Individualism. <laughs> Strong and independence among these women. I don't need no man. As for a man, oh, 
just be a playboy out here, just just fuck a bunch of random women and get that bag, which this all just leads to loneliness, broken homes, broken hearts, single parent households and throughness out here. Let me see where I want to I'll go back to the article a little bit. Money can't buy Gen Zers happiness, but they do hope it can buy them friends. There's a crying for wine in the streets. All the merry hearted do sigh. The mirth of the tabard ceaseth. Good times are gone. Now I'm going to, you know, jump around a little bit more in this article to hit some points. I'll jump right here. Art studios have also seen an uptick in Gen Z attendees. Barley Vogel, the owner and director of Studio Arts Dallas, said there's been an increase in younger adults attending the studio's classes. Rebecca Schweiger, the founder of the art studio New York, told Insider that Gen Zers are attending classes regularly to fulfill the need for community and connection. Hey, it's not just Gen Z. Like I said earlier, it's millennials, you know, Gen X, they shit, probably a lot of baby boomers as well. All across the board, these different generations are through. You know, on uh, my social media, I'm friends with uh, uh, some women that I've known throughout my life. And I see that they go to these different, you know, art events where they paint a picture and sip on some wine. But one thing you never see is them on their profiles with a husband, with a boyfriend, with a family, single women just continuing to get used up and trying to create connections out here, going to these different social events. But it all fails at the end of the day because under this lawless society of Esau Edoms, nobody is fulfilling their traditional roles. Frequently, Younger adults are coming alone, seeking camaraderie in addition to personal fulfillment, she said. And I've been getting on these uh, women a lot. But hey, men out here, hey, they ain't faring better either. Hence why you've got this whole MGTOW men going their own way movement. You know, the red pill, you know, the blue pill. And they've got something called the black pill, which pretty much just says if you're not tall, good looking or have money. You might as well kill yourself. Your life is worthless. That is the state of affairs out here. It's quite typical for students, adult students, to make friends, to socialize together, to first get to know each other in the class setting and then get together outside of classes, Schweiger said. Ba -ba -ba. I think I'll read this last section right here. Gen Zers are also finding cheaper ways to solve loneliness because, hey, a lot of people out here don't have $500 to throw around a month or $2,500 to throw around annually. Some Gen Zers don't have the funds or the will to spend thousands of dollars a year on activities and memberships aimed at making friends. Fortunately, there are other options. Lillian Lima, 27 said she spent a Sunday in August eating and enjoying music with friends on Peaks Island in Maine. The social gathering included three people she met last year through Bumble BFF, an app meant to encourage platonic relationships. And Bumble is traditionally, you know, a dating app like Tinder. But things have gotten so bad out here to where they're creating dating apps that have an extra component towards making friendship apps that's how, you know, through and pathetic these people are out here for living this rebellious, anti-biblical lifestyle. And all these women right here, you know, they're part of the through crew, you know, and a lot of them, you know, to the average man, they would look down on him as, you know, being a oh, he's he's a lame. He's a bore. He's a he's a, a nine to fiver blue collar guy. Where's that excitement? Where's that money? 
where's a uh, where's that bad boy that I can turn into a good guy who just uses you up for one night and in a, in a in a society with the laws, statutes and commandments established, you know, even these average looking women and below average in some cases would be married off by their father to a man and they would become a wife, have children, take care of the household and be fulfilled a woman's traditional role. But in Esau Edom's lawless society with the earth languishing under it and the haughty, proud people languishing, this is what we get. A bunch of single, lonely whores, a bunch of single, lonely, you know, loser men and, and, and simps and, and shit. Cucks out here. It's just a hor horrific state of affairs. Lima, now a graduate student based in Portland, Maine, tried out the free version of Bumble BFF, Best Friend Forever, in the summer of 2022. She was feeling lonely from a breakup. Oh, imagine that. And I wonder how many breakups she's had since 2022. Instead of, you know, staying with the man that broke her virginity for the rest of her life and be his wife. Working a hybrid job for a retail company and living at home by herself with a box of wine. Hey, and who knows how many cats she has. To look back at where I was a year ago and to where I am now, the fact that I'm still in contact with this person I met through an app a year ago, that I'm introducing her to new people, and she's introducing me to new people, it just felt very like a beautiful scene, she said, scrolling through fro photos from that day on Peaks Island. You know, the more, the more we read of this article, the more, you know, pathetic we see that these people out here's lives are. So this this proud smokescreen that people put up out here is just that. It's a smokescreen. These people aren't living like that on social media. And if they act proud or arrogant around you, uh, you brothers out there in your daily life, just know that they're suffering on the back end because they don't have the truth. They are fully invested in this society that's destroying them. So when this society destroys itself, that's game over for them. But let's get back into these precepts. Let me see where I want to go. I'll go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 1. And you know, the scriptures have prophesied these times that we're living in right now. And what does the header reads? Difficult times will come. This know also that in the last days, which we're living in, really the last seconds of the last days, perilous, deadly, dangerous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, you know, men and women, which we can clearly see with this whole social media generation. You can't enjoy going out to dinner or going to a, 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 a concert without taking a picture and documenting it and not living in the moment. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So what? Living a narcissistic, selfish, you only live once lifestyle out here, which in turn leads to what? People not being able to form connections with each other and just through out here to where they've got to go on to dating apps. We'll go on to friendship making apps now without natural affection. Hey, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In these times we're living in, people are only friends of convenience. They're only your friends because you're doing something for them. But until, but when you're no longer able to do anything for them or you uh, offend their emotions or their weak egos or sense of self, that friendship is over. Then what? You've got so-called girlfriends out here that, oh, it's all about the sisterhood. But they're, they're more than happy to, you know, if they like one of their friends is men, more than happy to get with that man and ruin that friendship and vice versa. You're, you're down with your boys and you bring your girlfriend around and one of your boys plots on your girlfriend. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, 
despisers of those that are good. And here you have the men of the Lord out here preaching all these things taking place and that this world needs to go back to a biblical mindset. And then you've got, you know, brothers and you sisters out there that are trying to live righteously, but people despise you for it. They look at you as a lame. They look at you as wasting your life. Oh, girl, why are you dressing modestly? Why don't you dress uh, with the mini skirt or the booty shorts and go have yourself a hot girl summer, a city girl summer? But when you look at them, what are they? Single, broken, busted, and spending thousands of dollars to try to make friendships and uh, connections with people. But now I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 2 to 4 because like I just said, hey, this, this confident image these people put out here, which we see is cracking more and more with each day, is just that, a false image. These people, you know, looking like they're living it up, going out on the weekends, going on trips, all that stuff. It's just to fill that empty void inside themselves. And for them living this rebellious, wicked lifestyle, they're ultimately going to be destroyed for it. So to you sincere Akim and Akwat out there, you know, we are still in this flesh. And, you know, we, we, we have to play by the rules, so to speak, and not be a part of this society as much as we can. And, you know, sometimes you may get those urges to go down, go out and let your hair down, so to speak. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know going out every once in a while and, and, and whatnot to relax and stuff. But that shouldn't be your whole goal and mindset. Going out every weekend, getting drunk, partying, going on trips, just living this lifestyle. Because for this, uh, you know, vain lifestyle these people are living, they're ultimately going to be destroyed for it. While those of you Israelites, you Israelites consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans of the hopeful elect that are spending this time of, uh, you know, this grace period, afflicting yourselves and not giving in to your lusts of the flesh, but doing whatever you can to please Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, being in the house of mourning, and you're ultimately going to have that protective hedge over you during Jacob's trouble, and the Most High is going to make sure you're taken care of, while these people out here the wicked of our people and these heathens, which have no hope at all, are going to get the full force of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai's judgment on them. But this is Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 2 to 4. It is better to go into the house of mourning, afflicting your flesh, doing whatever you can to stay in the good graces of your power, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and not giving in to the cares and the affairs of this life not wanting to be a part of this society and live this lifestyle that these uh, average everyday Americans are living, than to go into the house of feasting, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lunches and dinners, going to, you know, art, art bullshit classes, spending, uh, you know, money to go to social clubs, living that social life, <laughs> that club life. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart or his mind. That uh, life of feasting, that life of uh, happiness on this side is what? The end or the destruction of you people out here. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart or the mind is made better. You're sober out here. You're building yourself up mentally and physically. And staying diligent in pleasing Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. You're not out here depressed. And the only thing that makes you happy is to go out and, you know, drink, club, have a one night stand. All that just just folly and childishness. This is a whole society based off of childishness. And uh, the other weekend, some of the brothers and myself, you know, after camp. We uh, went to this particular food truck and because uh, he was parked in this particular area. So we had to go down to this area to get some of that food. And, the you know, there was a little club open. So after we got through eating, we just went in there and chilled for a, for a little bit. You know, they had a pool table, you know, some drinks and stuff like that. But uh, 
the brother Kayan my camp made a beautiful point that Babylon is built off of childishness because inside this club for adults, you got to be 21 and up to get in there. All they had were arcade machines and, and, you know, video games and stuff like that, which, you know, I still play video games from time to time. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with playing video games, but that just goes to show the childishness of things. Here's a club filled with video games like you're going to Chuck E. Cheese. That's what the people of this world look forward to. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Having a good time. But what did it say back up in verse two? For that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart. So again, to you sincere Akim and Akwat out there, hey, don't feel bad. Don't get in that spirit of feeling like you're missing out on things because, you know, we do what we can to stay diligent to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which includes afflicting ourselves and afflicting our flesh and building up that discipline, not being wanton out here, not being a reveler, a drunk, a asshole, or a whore out here, because it's all going to pay off in the end during Jacob's trouble when you see Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai protect you from all these calamities that these people who have been spending this time of grace have lived it, you know, being a, a childish, alcoholic narcissist out here, they're going to get the full force of judgment. They're going to starve to death. They're going to be eaten to death by these cannibals. They're going to get thrown into concentration camps and get tortured to death and ultimately get hit by those nuclear missiles when they hit this place. But now I'm going to go to... Isaiah chapter 32, I'm going to read verses 9 to 12, because like I was saying earlier in the video, notice how in this article, the pictures you see of everybody is what? Primarily women, because you women, shit, especially in America, are the most out of order out here. So when society collapses, which the society is built off of catering to women, you're going to go through it the most. And like the brothers always say, hey, the majority of the two thirds in America of you Israelites are women. So it's going to be more women out here dying than men. But this is Isaiah chapter 32. I'm going to read verses 9 to 12. Rise up. Ye women that are at ease. And it's it damn sure sounds like you're at ease when you've got five hundred dollars, you know, twenty five hundred dollars to throw around to go to dinner and lunch dates, go to art classes, and go to social clubs. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my unto my speech. And we're mainly speaking to you Israelite women out here. Because these heathen women got no chance of being saved. But you Israelite women that may come across this video, hey, if you repent, you've got a chance of being saved. But for the majority of you, it's going to be too late. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, not having a care in the world, more concerned with making friends than you know, actually, uh, shit, more concerned with taking a trip to Italy with friends to learn how to make pasta instead of being a housewife, a mother, you know, happily taking care of the home and cooking food for your family. That's oppressive. That's misogynist. That's not strong and independent. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. And the vintage is this society and all the goodies that come with it. You getting all these, uh, all this tuition and grants and, and loans catered towards women so you can get a so-called uh, education and get a corporate job. You know, these government benefits, Section 8, food stamps, all that. It is quickly coming to an end. You're going to find out that when you said you were strong and independent and that you didn't need a man and you could do bad all by yourself, that was because you had the government as your man. And the government is run by who? Esau Edom, the so-called white man. So once he throws you to the curb, 
Hey, you're going to be asked out out here. And a lot of those men that you screwed over in the past are going to be coming. Hey, to punch your ticket. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. And I was watching a video earlier by the brother in Kansas City. I believe his page name is GMS Living Waters KC. And he was talking about how over in Los Angeles, you had two so-called black women, two Judite women who were models that uh, were found dead, murdered, I think a couple of weeks apart from each other. And they believe that there's a serial killer out there targeting women. And we've seen an uptick of that. A lot of you women out here getting kidnapped and murdered and abused out here. And it's only going to increase as this vintage continues to fail and society collapses. So it would behoove you Israelite women out there that come across videos like this or other videos from the prophets. Hey, to get your mind right, to start repenting and following after the ways of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And hey, if you've got a man right now, you take care of that man. You don't you don't get bored with him and cast him to the side and go find a new man. That's a uh, that's whoredom. That's adultery. And, you know, if you're a sincere sister out there that's single right now, hey, just keep doing what you're doing. And the most high will have it to where if you have that elect number, you, you know, you will be covered by a man of the Lord. But. Now I'm going to go to Second Esdras chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 22 to 24 because this society is ripe for total collapse. And as we've been reading in that article, hey, there's an epidemic of loneliness out here. So what, like I was saying earlier, there's no you know close bonds between people, no strong friendships or no uh, neighborhood community. I brought this up in, in plenty of videos in the past with a lot of you people out here. When you see your neighbor, you you either wait in the car until they go in the house or you rush to get inside so you don't have to talk to them. Or if you see people you knew from high school or whatever, you, you want to go and hide on the next aisle because you don't want to talk to them. We've got a, a, a lonely, you know, distrusting society. So when things truly collapse out here, you know, empty store shelves food shortages, and all that stuff, people won't give a second thought to fucking each other over and putting each other to death just so that they can survive for another day, hell, another hour, another five minutes. This is Second Esdras chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And what, uh, what does a farmer do when he plants crops? He sows the land. So it's saying what? The sown places, these different farms and croplands shall appear unsown. And we've seen over these last uh, couple of years that adverse weather events globally have uh, destroyed a lot of croplands and have heavily hampered farmers' abilities to plant a sufficient amount of crops that they need. So that's going to lead to what? The full storehouses suddenly being found empty, emptier and emptier store shelves. And on top of that, you've had this uh, these supply chain disruptions leading to emptier store shelves. And a lot of these food processing plants across the planet mysteriously burning down. And a lot of that's by design of the elites to what gets you people desperate out here. When your bellies are touching your backs, you'll happily, gladly Walk into those uh, concentration camps and get that C-hip implant in you just so you can get some food. But what? Suddenly shall the, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, emptier and emptier store shelves. And the things that are available on the store shelves due to inflation and hyperinflation, they're going to become unaffordable for a lot of people. So what's what are people going to turn to? Robbery ramshacking these places for what they have left, which is what we're already seeing. You've got a, I believe it was a Walmart in Pennsylvania 
that had to put little metal cages with sensors over the stakes because people were stealing those set stakes in mass numbers. And, and I was watching a video by a brother earlier talking about how at Aldi's, which I believe is like a grocery store type place, if you go in there with your own bag to put your groceries in, when you go to checkout, you have to empty all of your contents out of the bag to make sure you're not stealing everything, stealing anything more than what, you know, shit, Salakia, to make sure that all the goods that you know that you're not stealing anything. I'm getting a little tongue twisted. And if that's happening while society is still somewhat functioning right now, imagine when those store shelves are completely empty and society is completely collapsed and the trumpet shall give a sound which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And what will cause that? Empty store shelves, losing their jobs, societal collapse, hyperinflation, state of martial law. And this is talking about friends fight one against another like enemies. So how much more people that can't make friends out here that have to pay money to uh, make friends? Oh, they're going to sell people out and fuck people over at the drop of a dime. And the earth shall stand in fear with those things that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Oh, and also, the water is going to get cut off as well, so the elites can further get you people desperate and starve you out. Hey, we're coming into some truly horrific times, and for people out there that are selfish and narcissistic and have trouble making friends and you've got no goddamn hope but now i'm gonna close it out in second esdras chapter 15 i'm gonna start at verse 15 and jump down to verse 19 for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands and that one people standing up and fighting against another can go into a whole host of things one political group standing up and fighting against another, you know, sex, sex, the sex is fighting against another, you know, men versus women, re uh, religious people versus atheists, you know, the average Joe going against those in the government and just the average everyday people going against each other because of a societal collapse out here because of empty store shelves, food shortages chaos taking place and again with people having a hard time connecting with their fellow americans they're not going to give a second thought to screwing each other over screwing each other over and that sword in their hands hey that's mainly going into that gun in the united states of america which what do we see during uh, the summer of 2020 with those uh, george floyd protests a, an uptick in new gun ownership and uh, people firing guns for the first time in, uh, in the country. Bullets were, were selling out <laughs> and best believe that these people still have these guns and these bullets and they're going to get to using them. But let's uh, jump down to verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Hey, the full storehouses suddenly being found empty. A man having no pity upon his neighbor. Friends fighting one against another like enemies. Hey, iniquity or lawlessness out here causing the love of many to wax cold and get it how they live to make sure they don't starve and to make sure that their loved ones don't starve. And how much worse is it going to be if there's an epidemic of loneliness out here right now to where people, hey, to hell with having a relationship with somebody. People are having a hard time making friends. Hey, that's the state of the affairs of the things we're in. And it's only going to get worse from here on out. But to you sincere Akim and Akwat out there, hey, just keep staying strong and diligent to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Staying in the house of mourning. Because when Jacob's trouble pay, uh, when Jacob's trouble kicks off, hey, all these, uh, all this affliction, and and patience, and discipline we've been building for ourselves is gonna pay off. So that's it with this video. 
And with this video, I hope you sincere Akiem and Akwath were edified. And as always, I'm going to say a Baba Bo, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.